Hey YouTube, Modkip here, back with another weapon breakdown for Season of Defiance. And I've tried all week to make two separate videos on the Imperial Decree and the Raconteur, and I'm going to be honest, it's just a bow and a shotgun. So I'm going to cram all my thoughts about both of these weapons into one video, save my time mulling over it, and save yours watching it. Luckily though, the Imperial Decree, a kinetic shotgun, has at least some purpose in Crucible. It might not be the only craftable aggressive frame, but the Ragon Hill D is absolute crap with quite possibly the worst perk selection I've ever seen in a shotgun. The other shotguns looking to sit in the same slot are either better or nearly impossible to get. Astral Horizon is just better, as you can get the same role as Imperial as well as get an adept version allowing for adept mods. And the Fractifist is only dropping from dares on rotation, so good luck with that. To be fair, if you aren't exactly very good in Crucible, I know I'm not, Imperial sits as a good replacement for Astral and is far easier to chase than Fractifist, though if you can grab a god roll of Fractifist, it is a precision frame, meaning with Assault Mag its fire rate is a little faster than aggressive, not to mention it has better range. I'm partial to lightweights myself, so I choose to run Wastelander M5 from Dares instead. If you're a shotgun ape and love running and gunning, craft Imperial Decree with full choke to tighten pellet spread, assault mag to increase fire rate, and a choice between threat detector or slide shot in the third slot, and opening shot in the fourth. I would not advise trying shotguns of any variety outside exotics or pinpoint slugs in PvE, as the limited ammo capacity and the very singular target damage makes them not very good for anything other than Crucible. To the sky and see the two sons of my Lubre, one eternally shaded in the dark, the other. Now, with the Imperial Decree out of the way, let's talk about the Raconteur, a stasis bow. As a precision frame, it has very little competition in its slot in terms of precision bows. There are really only two in the game other than the Raconteur. But how does it fare against the Accrued Redemption from Garden of Salvation and Biting Wind from Europa? A Crude Redemption can get Archer's Tempo Explosive Head, while Biting Wind gets Rapid Hit Explosive Head. Although Raconteur can't get Rapid Hit, it can get Archer's Tempo and Explosive Head. But Raconteur has a unique perk for its forward slot, as it is the only precision bow in the kinetic slot that can get Archer's Tempo and successful warm-up. If you've ever tried out Under Your Skin, Avoid Precision with the same roll, you know that this pairing is insane for getting shots out. And while Raconteur doesn't come with land tank, an insane survivability trait that reduces damage by 15% at max stacks, it does come with Noble Deeds, which activates after pretty much any team play, such as assisting allies with revives and buffs. Noble Deeds essentially shortens the time between shots because it buffs handling and reload speed. This boost lasts for up to 10 kills. Raconteur might be just another bow, but with Noble Deeds, Archer's Tempo, and successful warm-up active, it can really put in the work. And as of right now, I'd say it stands as the fastest shooting precision available in the game. Sadly, it is just a bow, so its usefulness in high-end content is situational at best and detrimental at worst. Not to mention, why run any other bow in the kinetic slot other than Wishender? If you like bows, pick it up. I'm running Elastic String, Fiberglass Arrow, Shaft, Archer's Tempo and Successful Warm-Up. Enhanced versions of most perks in the game are also not worth the Ascent and Alloy, so I'd advise saving them up on both of these weapons, but that's entirely up to you. That's really all I've got to say about these two weapons. They are amazing, truly, but because they are two of the most niche weapon types in-game, it's really hard to give them a feature that matters in a way that either does them justice or allows me to say something about them that wasn't said three months ago by someone else. They're great weapons, but as things stand in the current sandbox, unless bows and shotguns get some magical glow up, they sit in the lowest priority as far as seasonal weapons go. If you've managed to sit through my jabbering on for this long, consider leaving a like. Anything to add to the conversation, just leave a comment. And subscribe as I plan to keep doing this type of content in Season of the Deep. I want to do an end of the season wrap up video as well to cap the season off. It will probably just be me complaining about the things I'm not enjoying too much this season, but I've held you up too long. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.